Hello, this is Key. Welcome back to Messy Desk Productions. Okay, so I, ha I bought this book-looking thing. This is just like a cardboard box. And it opens up. And you see I can use it for storage. I bought this at Michael's for $3.99. Um, the idea behind it is that I can put it on the craft table and I can use it to hold small scraps or embellishments or something like that um, while I'm working on other things. Um, so this is kind of ugly as it is, so we're, I'm going to paint it and decorate paint it and decorate it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sponge brush and I'm going to gesso it. I'm going to put gesso on the bottom before I paint it. Okay, so now I am just taking the gesso and using my sponge brush here to cover the surface of this box in gesso. Of course, once I get done with it, I'm going to have to wait for it to dry before I can apply any paint. And I'm just going to smooth it out here. So now I have gesso all over the surface of the box, at least for the top side. So now we wait for it to dry. Okay, now that my gecko, my gecko, my now that my gesso is dry, I've begun painting this book. Now let me just forewarn you: I am not, I don't have a very steady hand. Um, I shake a lot, so I get paint everywhere when I paint. That's why when I do any detail work, I do that before I do the overall painting. So here I have the um, the edge of what would be the book pages, and I'm just going to make a little arc in here, arc, arch, whatever, and then I'm going to use that to spread the, the paint out. Now the color that I'm using is Folk Art Metallic Pure Gold, which I'll show you in just a second since I need a refill. Folk Art Metallic Pure Gold. Um, I actually bought this on sale for 79 cents at Michael's yesterday. Now what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to make these sides look like they are the gold rimmed pages. So I'm just going to cover it with paint first and then when I get done and make sure it's all covered in paint then I'm going to go over it once again with a dry paintbrush or a semi dry paintbrush just to create the straight lined streaks I'll do that here that you would see on book pages. If the streaks are straight it's going to look more like paper. There we go. So now I'm going to start this edge. And I'll just do the same thing. I'm going to I'm going to cover it and paint first to make sure I get the whatever you call it, the edge there. And I'm just going to cover it all in paint first and then I'll create the, the streaks that I need for the book pages. Okay, so now that I've got it covered in paint, I'm just going to put a little bit more on here. Use up the paint that I've got in the tray here. And now I'll create the paper streaks.
And there we have it. So now we have the edges of each one painted. Now I'm probably going to have to go over this again because it looks like it needs another layer. And I'm getting fingerprint paint everywhere, so we're going to pause for now and clean up this mess. Okay, so now that our gold paint has dried, I have started the purple paint. And what I did was I took my tiny paintbrush here and uh, worked in between the gold stripes there and around the edges so that my unsteady hands wouldn't paint over the gold. Um, so far, I only have a little bit of touching up to do on the edges, um, so I'm, I'm doing all right. <laughs> um, so now we're just finishing up the painting here. We're going to paint the edges. Now for this one, for this color anyway, I'm using folk art and the color is red violet. Purple is my favorite color, so this was the prettiest purple I could find. Um, again, they were having a sale, a sale at Michael's yesterday, and uh, each bottle of paint for folk art was 79 cents a piece. So I took advantage of that and bought a lot of them. Um, I only found two purples. Um, and this is the prettier of the two. The other one's a bit darker, I think. Um, so I'm just putting a, a bottom layer here um, to cover up all the gesso. And then once this bottom layer dries, I'll go over it one more time with the same paint um, just to get all the white streaks out and stuff. And then I'll have to let that sit and dry before I do anything else. As to what I'm going to do next, I'm not real sure yet. I'm thinking I might play with some crackle paint and see what, how that turns out. We'll see. I still have the whole inside of the box I need to figure out what I'm going to do with. But, we'll see. So, I'm not going to bore you and keep babbling while I, uh, put this first layer of paint on. I'm going to get this side painted and finish my purple paint here. And then I will come back to you and we'll talk about what we do next. Okay, now as you can see, I've got the book painted. Everything's completely painted except for the inside. I, I'm not going to paint the inside yet. I'm not quite sure just yet what I'm going to do with the inside. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a title on the book. I'm going to use Royal Purple Stays On. And I'm just going to stamp with my unmounted stamps the title of the book.
is done here. with my stamp but stay on my acrylic block there. Okay, now that I've got it all painted, what I'm doing now is I'm applying crackle paint to it to give it kind of an alligator skin effect. Um, I've done this side and, this, side and the, um, this, this part already. Um, all I have left to do is the front cover here, so I'll go ahead and do that while you watch. Um, where I left off, when I had used the stays on to stamp on my spare parts. I also used a mounted stamp to do my handmade by stamp and then of course key. Um, so after I used the purple stays on as I had said um, it didn't show up real well so I used gold paint and just painted over the letters painted over the purple stays on there so it shows up good. And so now I'm going to apply my crackle paint. I think after the crackle paint dries, it gives it a true old book kind of feel. As you can see, the, the way I'm, the crackle paint that I'm using is the Tim Holtz Distress Crackle Paint. And I think it, it, it does a real good job. Like I said, it makes it look like, um, kind of like alligator skin once it dries. Okay, so I've got the whole front cover done, so I'm just going to lay it down and let it dry for now. I don't know if you can really see the crackle here. But, I mean, it, it does really look like alligator skin here on the binding. I like that, and it kind of looks like a distressed old book. Okay, now that my, um, my crackle paint is dry, sorry, I got distracted, um, I'm now putting on my decorations, my embellishments. This is a, um, cameo. It's just a girl and a bird with flowers in her hair. Um, I think it's a Marion Smith cameo. I'm not for sure. It may be a knockoff of, the, of one of hers. And then Tim Holtz um, 
gears on the corners here and then I'm going to take these flowers these are from the Martha Stewart holiday collection and they were out around Valentine's Day well I'm not a big fan of the color pink um, so they they can't they can't decorate my stuff while they're still pink so what I'm gonna do is take my mini mister and see if we can't turn them into a different color or a mixture of different colors apparently okay two of them turned out light blue and then the real dark pink ones turned out kind of purplish I, I like those so I'm gonna let those dry there and um, as soon as they are dry then we'll come back and glue them onto the book cover to finish it off okay now while my flowers are drying and by the way the color that I used in the mini mister to spray them was um, broken china and forever green I think um, just in case you were wondering anyway what I want to do now is I want to line the inside of the box with decorative paper so that it doesn't look like cardboard so it looks kind of pretty um, I just picked two basic pieces of paper out of one of the um, big 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 card uh, paper stacks that I got um, so I, I already measured them um, now I didn't go for perfection here it's just a basic covering I'm going to use my uh, my permanent adhesive stamp runner thing if I can figure out how to open it ignore my son dying in the background I think he's being attacked by the cat or something he'll be alright okay Give myself some space here. Let me see how this works. This is the first time I'm using this stamp runner thing. And apparently it works just like the ATG does. Only it's not as big and bulky. Okay, I've got the adhesive ew on there. That's okay. It's just the inside of the box. It's going to get marked up anyway. Note to self, don't put it in the wet spray if you don't want it to look sprayed. Right, got it. Okay, now the cat's dying. We'll ignore that too. Okay, that side is done. Okay, now let's show you how that turned out there. Now you see on the sides we have paper affixed to the side of the box. So now we'll work on the bottom and top. Like I said, I already pre-measured these and cut them aside. And then this one. It's a little bit tricky. smooth it out in here. It's got this curve where the binding of the book is. Alright. I'm just smoothing everything down, making sure the edges are down. So there you see we have the bottom end. Now we'll work on the top here. Again, I didn't go for perfection inside the box because I don't think anybody that's going to be visiting will really look inside the box except for those nosy ones that craft with me and that's okay. I, I don't mind them seeing my imperfections. So there's the inside of the box. Oh, I forgot to cut this side. So let's go ahead and cut that, that side there. Okay. if I have something to measure by and I do so I'm 
just going to line it up here. This is a little scrapping off of the first strip that I cut for the sides. And I'll take my scissors and attempt to cut left-handed. Uh, maybe that's not too smart. Let's try it. Let's change it out here. Oh, that's much easier. Who would have thunk it? that out of the way. Cut this little tag off. And I'm sorry if I'm doing this outside of where you guys can see me, but, you know, you'll get over it. Cut a little side off there. Ouch, that's my finger. And that fits almost. Okay, now it fits. I'm going to apply adhesive. And there we go. We've got the inside, inside of the box decorated. Oh, look at that. I've got some sticking out of my perfectionist self here. Trim that off. Okay, well, you know what? That's good. Who cares? There we have it. So now we are just waiting again for the flowers to dry. Um, let's see. And you know what? We can put them on there and they can dry on the book, right? So now I'll take my tacky glue. I'm going to take one of the flowers here and just put a little glue drop on there. Stick it where I want it. And then I'll take another one. Isn't this so much fun? Stick it where I want it. This isn't repetitive at all. Shortcut, huh? flower. Ooh, I just glued it to my finger. <laughs> oh well. Where's my rack? Okay, we're going to let those sit for a second. Let's see if I can tilt this up. Ooh, I want to change the position of two of them. She says after she glues them down. It's the perfectionist, I swear. Okay, we'll let those sit for just a second and see if we can't tilt it up to show you without them all falling off. How quickly does the glue stick? There we go. So that is our final product there. Now, of course, I reserve the right to add bits and pieces and spare parts as I go along and decorate it up. But for starters, this is, what, this is how I want to leave it. So, thank you for joining me in creating this fake spare part